Hello there, welcome back to the Crusader States Abridge. Last time we crusaded in the wrong direction and lost a load of our guys, but we did steal some territory from the Fatimids as a result after a quick battle to get inside. Then a massive enemy force came over to try and challenge us to the area, but we spammed knights and absolutely destroyed them, so now we're free to go and try to conquer some more stuff. Our noble council is on the ball because they give me the mission to go and conquer the next settlement down the road in the direction that we're going already. So that's nice, now we're going to get some free units out of that. So yes, we'll go on with the army that just defeated that Fatimid stack and do the siege. There's basically nothing in there, so guaranteed to win eventually. Meanwhile, we've got some issues nearby. Heretics have started appearing. It seems some people are not preaching Catholicism by the book. I wasn't really sure how this worked, because in the mods I've played before, there weren't heretics, basically, so I didn't really know what I was doing with these, but I tried to convert them back to pure Catholicism using my priests. The chance of it working was low, and actually one of the priests got convinced the other way and decided to be a heretic, so that didn't go very well. Again, anyone who knows how really you should get rid of heretics, do let me know. And once again, it will be too late to actually impact this campaign, I expect, but handy to know, I'm sure. Anyway. Since I've been recruiting units all over the place, as much as I can, I've now gradually put together a second army at Gaza. It's a pretty bad army and it's not a full stack, but it's getting to the point when it's enough to do stuff. We can go west and try to take that not particularly defended Fatimid castle. The risk is that because we can't get there this turn, the Fatimids can counterattack us, and indeed this army isn't very good, it's full of the same sorts of trash the Fatimids use, so if they have more of them we'll be in trouble. However, as you saw, I fortified there, that means they can't attack me this turn, they'll have to besiege my fort in order to attack. Buying me some time potentially, I could send more troops from Gaza to reinforce if a battle starts building, we'll see what happens. Over at that tamer place, I'm going to auto-resolve the attack, although with a cheeky save first, and I almost went back to that save upon seeing our losses. I thought we can probably do this for basically no losses if we do it manually, but I couldn't be bothered, and we are getting to the point when taking losses isn't all that bad, since we can recruit things sometimes, so I just take that. And then I immediately move out of the town with all of the cav, because there were a couple of nearby Fatimid units on their own, and I thought this is a chance to kill them. That balance bar wasn't very good, but I knew in reality we can just run right into them, so here's me doing that. At the front though, they have these Kurdish javelin men. I thought, well, it's a javelin unit, we'll just go right through them. But they did manage to stop the charge, and actually, you'll see they kill quite a few of the Crusader Knights in there. We even get the flashing numbers thing, we're losing so many of them. These Kurdish javelin men, I later found out, have pretty high stats actually, which is why they do well, and we'll see them doing well in more battles as we go on. They have the stats defensively of heavy infantry, so they still die to night charges, but they do take some of our guys with them. The troops behind them, the Bedouin light infantry, are terrible. They rout instantly and that's going to be the end of that. After the battle there was another army to attack. This time it's just one Fatimid officer who's on his own. Felt comfortable with the auto resolve and that was fine in the end. Although if I'd done it manually he might not have survived. He did escape there and just run off at a million miles per hour into the distance. In fact he was running south and that is because there is another Fatimid town down there. So the forces in this area will gather up again and go after that as their next project. The council wants me to do something else though, they want me to focus on blockading the port at Cairo. This is especially inconvenient because it's in the wrong sea, I'd have to build entire new shipyards to have any chance of doing that, so let's just ignore the council for a bit on that one I think. With the guys we put in that fort, looks like the enemy have not besieged them so we can move on, but there is a Fatimid army nearby. The risk was that that army would just attack me if I went to besiege their castle. However, the fort is right on the edge of that bridge and it actually blocks passage. That means all we need to do is leave some random grunts inside to hold down the fort, and now the enemy can't get to this little strip of land to the west of the river, meaning we can besiege the castle in peace and their main force will just have to waste its time. Looks like we are going to get this place after all then, since there's not much inside either. In the Fatimid turn, their army starts moving towards Gaza instead but it's stopped by the rebel army, which you might remember is led by one of my former officers, so that's good of them, they're still doing service. They also sent one unit to go and besiege my little fort, but that's going to be far too little and indeed too late. 
Meanwhile, to the south, we are marching on towards Medina, and upon arrival there's not much inside so we're probably going to get it, but interestingly inside is the Caliph, the leader of the Fatimids, so we're going to take down their faction leader, he's a really high authority faction leader as well, so especially important to kill. And that reminded me to check my own authority, and it looks like it's been going up. I used to have two, I think, and I've gone up to five. So it's just from winning battles and generally appearing competent, people are getting less and less likely to rebel, which surely will be useful. Now, back to that siege of the castle. We're ready to attack, but the balance bar looks quite bad. The enemy don't have many troops, but they're decent troops, including the legendary Kurdish javelinmen with armor upgrades. So, seeing this, I thought we're going to have to take this one in manually to avoid any auto-resolve disasters. Well, I say avoid disasters. Obviously, I wasn't that interested in avoiding disasters, as you'll see. It started off well, because the enemy don't have enough troops to defend their walls, therefore we can capture large parts of the wall for free right away. However, where they were defending the walls, I just attacked anyway, and here we are, getting a ton of javelins thrown at us. I say us, the poor spear militia, who I've ordered to attack that gate for no reason. Yes, they're getting killed, and even though I could easily just send melee troops up to distract the javs so that they couldn't throw at me, we're not going to do that, we're not even going to run away to buy some time and save some lives and then do it. I'm apparently going to sit here and just watch my men die and marvel at the effect of the Javelineers. It's all an experiment to me, I'm a very nasty commander. I did have another attack coming in from the east as well, but that one was messed up by some invisible impassable terrain, so the siege tower ended up pretty much joining the attack on the southern part of the castle and not really achieving anything at all. But yes, we took the walls and got those jabs into melee. And of course we took the gate using that ram, enough men survived to get us in, so the cav are going inside right there. I wanted to take some revenge by getting my own jabs up on the wall to throw down at the enemy's spears. It was much less effective because the jabs weren't in proper formation and the enemy spears are much better than mine. Those Nubian spearmen are kind of like an official professional unit, so they're much better than spear militia, which is what I'm using. Meanwhile, my axe troops are getting annihilated by the enemy's jabs. So yes, these Kurdish jabs, as you can actually see when you look at them, they're heavily armoured, they have a massive shield and they're wearing chainmail. Their melee stats aren't that good, but they're better than melee militia, which is surprising for a ranged unit or a skirmishing unit. So we're just going to have to leave that grind going and carry on. Those Nubian spears were moving back towards the capture point, and I desperately want to rout them before they get there so we don't have to fight them to the death. I could only catch up to them with Cav though, which is a bit dangerous considering we're going up against spears. Still, I just go for it, use some jabs to soften the enemy up, with my jab cav actually killing half of their own troops in the process. Then we go in with the heavier cav to try and get some work done, and the enemy do rout. So that all works out, and now we're going to start manoeuvring towards the capture point. There's just a general standing on it, but we still need to be very careful. Meanwhile, against the Kurdish jabs, I've come up with a solution here. We're not really killing them very well with our melee infantry, but I can bring my own Kurdish jabs down to throw from ground level up at them. We're throwing into their shielded side, so it's not ideal, but it does some damage and that causes them to rout, so now we're going to defeat them. It seems the only thing that can take down Kurdish jabs reliably is Kurdish jabs. We'll have to keep that in mind and try to spam them some more as we go on because they're nice and cheap and cheerful, but also pretty good. Now, for the attack on the town centre, I'm lining up ready to shoot arrows at the enemy general standing there. Well, some of my guys are. Others are just going for it, like one crazy crusader. Going to reel them in because we don't want to start this fight prematurely. If we can, we want to kill a whole bunch of the guards and then run in, because a fight to the death against a general's bodyguard will cost us hundreds of lives, no doubt. So we get these levy archers ready to go. The problem is levy archers are terrible. They have very short range, low accuracy, low damage. I'm sure the only stat they have that isn't low is their upkeep or something. Basically, I wasn't very impressed, as you might be able to tell. The arrows go in, most of them don't do anything. You can kind of tell it's not damaging them because they're not going into loose formation as the AI often does. But after a while, on 6x speed, we actually do get a kill against them. And then it all starts breaking down because the enemy immediately charge the archers. I use my handy godlike ability to stop time to take the brunt of the charge on some spear levy instead. 
and then we're kind of golden because the enemy aren't on the capture point anymore. We can surround them and fight to the death in a slightly more reasonable way. We'll take slightly fewer losses, maybe. And of course, we take the capture point, so we're guaranteed to win eventually. Here we are some time later. The Saracen general dies, as somebody very happily tells me, and that's the end of that. I think we did lose a whole bunch of guys trying to grind down that general's bodyguard, but there's not much else you can do. So we win, we lost about as many troops as the enemy did, and I thought, well, we probably should have auto-resolved that, to be honest. This result's the sort of thing we would have got from the auto-resolve. But now we've learned some lessons. Or have I? I don't really know. We've learned about Kurdish jabs, at least. We've taken this castle as well, that's another important thing to note. And the good thing about this castle is it comes with all the buildings already there. So that means it's going to be a key recruitment centre. We can pump out some trash right on the front lines, and of course that's going to be terribly handy. We also, by the way, in the same turn, sent some guys out to deal with that little siege where our poor pilgrims were stuck in a fort and relieved them. So that's the end of that. Now we'll settle down and try to stop the locals rebelling. With priests, I tried this tactic that somebody mentioned in the comments to one of the previous parts. They said if you convert a place real fast, it levels up the priests who are there, and that the best idea is to group all the priests together. So if that is a good idea, we're going to be trying it right now to get ourselves some high-level priests, and then maybe we can deal with the heretics. That's the plan. We'll see how that goes. Down with the siege at Medina, the enemy have brought over some reinforcements, so now that I come to make this attack, it's a balanced engagement. There's not very much inside, but they do have some of the dreaded Kurdish javelinmen, a very similar setup to the castle we just attacked, actually. Here was when I discovered the truth about Kurdish javs, looking up their stats and comparing them to the Nubian spears the enemy have, and realizing that basically Kurdish javs have roughly similar stats to melee units, but they also have javs. So really, they're a versatile and powerful unit that we should use more of. Now for this battle, while it's a balanced engagement and we're facing plenty of enemy units, they are split up between two armies and one army will be stuck inside the castle. So in theory, all we need to do is focus on the reinforcements first and that will give us an advantage for part two of the battle against the castle. Now the enemy's camels here have glitched out, a classic glitch where they haven't come onto the field properly. That means they're not participating in the battle and this confuses the reinforcement AI, so they just stood there for a really long time. And I'm also standing down on the plains trying to get the enemy to come down so I can give them a good charge on flat ground. It didn't happen and eventually I got bored, so I started part two. I sent some men to go and take some of the walls. However, then the enemy did send some light cav to charge towards me, so we are going to focus on this first. With the light cav, we'll just send out a ton of heavy cav to face them off head on. The other units are gradually coming away from the line except the camels who remain glitched out. So we can effectively ignore the camels for this battle because they can't participate in it. We hit those light cav with a pretty hefty charge from the Knights Templar right into their flank. It doesn't completely annihilate them because you can't stomp through them like you can with Imp, but it kills a load and now our stats advantage will allow us to finish them off. But then everything else starts coming down the hill and a big brawl ensues. I'm eager to get out of the brawl because I want some space. I want to go away and then charge back into it to get some more kills with our knight's lances. But the enemy are sticking to me with their general and they've got some horse archers who aren't going to be uh, coming after us if we run away. They'll just keep shooting us. So things are going to descend into a bit of a mess here. I'm going to send tons of units to just charge the enemy general and try to take him down, while others will run at the horse archers. Because we're chasing them uphill, this isn't quite so futile as it often is. The enemy will be forced to stop. So they only kill a few of our knights before we get them into a melee. Then that'll be good. As for the enemy general, well, there's no really good way to kill him. We just have to face him off with a ton of our own heavy cav and hope it's an even trade at least. We're going to have him totally surrounded here, so I'm sure we're getting in some good hits and stun-locking them so they can't attack us too much. Eventually, that general's unit is taken out all the way down to the general himself, who actually escapes. Also escaping that melee was a unit of enemy light infantry. I hit them with some of my marine, my own pure trash, who just don't do anything with their wooden clubs. But we can surround them with some spear militia and get down to business there properly. There's that one general, I've caught up to him with my mounted sergeants. I'm going to try and kill him, but mounted sergeants are a lighter cav unit, so they're going to gradually get killed by that one general, actually. 
Now, over on the walls, our Knights Templar have taken some space, but they are being challenged by Kurdish Javs. So, it's time for a legendary battle between the famous Knights Templar and the even more famous Kurdish Javaneers. We'll see who comes out on top. Certainly not a one-sided affair. Outside the city, the battle is starting to come to an end now. Our Cav have rear-attacked the enemy's Bedouin infantry, and that's the end of that. Their general dies in that little fight with the mounted sergeants. And their skirmish cav, who are still running away from my heavy cav by the looks of things, run right into this group and they're going to get themselves killed quite effectively there. With that, the reinforcement army is defeated, with the exception of the camels who are just going to remain glitched on the edge of the map. We can ignore them. It's time then to focus on the attack of the castle. However, things are stalled because my Crusader Knights are gradually being killed against those Kurdish Javs. Not just the Javs, they are fighting underneath the tower which will be killing them as well. But it means we can't use those Knights to clear out other sections of the wall or capture the gate or something. So we're going to go full assault with everything else now. Taking on board the lesson from the previous battle, I'm going to send my Kurdish Javs to fight with theirs. Surely the only way to bring them down. This may give some hope to our Knights Templar, but with two units that are alike fighting, the enemy has the advantage in that it's on hard difficulty, so their stats are higher, plus the more practical advantage of the towers mostly shooting at my men rather than theirs. So still not ideal. I was able to capture the enemy gate with a small group of spears and not have to bother ramming it, so that sped things up. But then some more bad news, some of the enemy's spears went over to fight my Knights Templar from the other side, so this is dangerous. As predicted, my Kurdish Javs are doing slightly badly against the enemy's Kurdish Javs. We're trading unfavourably, but we are killing them at least, so that's a start. But our Knights Templar are having a terrible time here. These Nubian spears just start annihilating them. We even get the flashy numbers thing, so you know it's bad. And I figured we'd have decent stats against them, but no, we actually get cut down to size. And now the Knights Templar are very low on numbers indeed, although after a while they stopped dying. I think those spears got tired or something. At the same time, some more spears are causing a blockade at the enemy gate. I'm trying to run past them with a bunch of units because I want to go for the capture point and I wanted to send archers to go and support my knights. But about a third of the archers died trying to run past the enemy's spears, so that didn't go particularly well. You might note that in this army we really lack four melee units, so actually just taking down those spears at the gates was a massive problem, and in the end I had to just say, well, we'll attack them with our Knights Templar because that's all we have. Whatever advantage those spears have against Cav, it wasn't enough and we were able to take them down, and we've also captured the center, so we're going to win eventually now. But the enemy general, who was hanging around at the back, is now coming over. The enemy king, in fact, their caliph. So we're going to have to face him, and I wanted to get out of the way. I didn't want to lose any more of my Knights Templar. I thought I'll just sacrifice a bunch of levy dudes and wait for the timer to run out. But it didn't work like that. My men didn't get out of the way in time, and we ended up fighting the enemy caliph. Luckily, with so many of our Knights Templar around, we've got good units, and we're able to take him down by attacking from all sides. So that went all right in the end. But things are still going badly for the Knights Templar, who are now almost completely destroyed. The time limit's about to run out, so they just need to hold on a bit longer. You can see we've totally divided the enemy's Kurdish Javs away, and my own Kurdish Javs are somehow now winning that fight. And with the Nubian Spears, my archer plan is now in place, but again I'm using levy archers. So even though we're shooting at close range and on the enemy's unshielded side for bonus damage, Nothing is happening. We kill a couple of them. <laughs> These volleys just aren't going to do anything. So with everything out the window and our knights doomed, we just wait for the time limit to run out and then God save them or something. They all survived in the end. But overall, a very messy battle. I expected that to go much better on many fronts. But in the end, we do have the win and I guess that's all that matters. This was a pretty big win as well, symbolically and practically. We killed the enemy faction leader, which is always nice, and we've captured their last bits of territory in Arabia. This means our war is no longer on two fronts. We can consolidate onto one front, which should make life much easier and things just neater in general. The castle we took is pretty good as well, but we're not going to go back right away because there is another territory to the south, Mecca in fact, a territory that is surely very valuable to our rivals, and that's controlled by rebels, so we'll just go and take that as well. At first I only sent Cav 
but I quickly realised the game will probably complain that we don't have anyone who can actually use these bits of siege equipment I'm building. So I had to send some infantry as well, meaning basically the whole army is down there. We don't really have any infantry, so those little scraps there are the best we can do. And we still avoid rebellion in Medina, so that's all very nice. Now it's time for a special treat. I am going to look at my diplomat in Rome. Yes, we've got to the point in the gameplay where I've read a few of the comments on the opening episodes, and several people pointed out we have this secret diplomat over here, so I thought we'll try and do some stuff with him, and now you can enjoy me doing it. I tried to get an alliance with the Papal States, thinking surely they will be the closest faction to me, but no, they weren't interested in an alliance. I think we have perfect relations with them as well, so I'm not quite sure why they won't ally with the literal Crusader States. I was able though to sell my map information to them, another thing people were recommending we do in the comments, so that's a nice little graft. I was also able to negotiate trade rights and even to get their map information, so they're going to tell me about a couple of the cities in Italy. Very nice, I guess we didn't know about that already. Overall, this diplomat may not be very useful, but we'll get some random deals with the Western European factions and potentially that could come in useful. Potentially not though, I don't think they're going to interact with me very much, especially because we're only playing the short campaign, which can probably be concluded just in our general area. Now to finish off this part, I just thought I'd mention that I auto-resolved Mecca. So that was the end of that, and now all of the Arabian territories, or the coastal Arabian territories here, are ours, and that means we can now bounce back up and get that one front war thing going. Although that said, we lost basically the whole army going down the coast, so we won't be going back with very much. The king is just about still alive, so we'll have him, but he's severely wounded now, giving him some pretty annoying debuffs. But whatever. He's got loads of authority now, and he's very pious, so overall he's not so bad as a king of the Crusader States. So yes, we will be going back up there, and next stop will be Cairo in the next part.